Good morning. Welcome to St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church, where we are sharing this virtual space together. Very good to share whatever space we can. Uh, It is the sixth Sunday after Pentecost, and it is a perfect day for God's children to worship and celebrate God and all the gifts that God gives to us, especially the gift of His Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, I just want to make a quick note that we are mourning along with the family of Dan Mooney this morning. Certainly, our prayers are with that family. Uh, Our church office will be closed this week. Please feel free to call in and leave messages as uh, I will be here to check messages each and every day. But certainly, uh, we want to keep our prayers extended to that family. We give thanks for the promises of Jesus Christ that are true for Dan and for each one of us. Um, I want to say thank you for those who continue to give to the church in so many different ways, for our social outreach ministries that are doing whatever they can during these uncertain and difficult times. For those of you who continue to give financially to the church, it is so much appreciated. We're staying as active and busy as possible. Again, this is one congregation of many that has never closed. We're wide open to the Spirit's call, and so thank you for whatever way that you're able to participate in those ministries. Uh, If you're not able to mail in uh, your pledge or your donation, you're welcome to go to stjohnscherryville.com. That's stjohnscherryville.com and click on that uh, donate page. And we do appreciate it and we'll put it to good use as we continue to serve God and our neighbors here in Cherryville. The coronavirus is tending to delay lots of things. We're hoping that it does not delay our HVAC project much. Um, And so I would remind you also that we continue to raise funding for our heating, ventilating, and air conditioning unit uh, for our education wing, a large project that continues on uh, even now. Um, Just to make a note about my own schedule, um, thank you for the prayers, the love, and support as our little family uh, is getting adjusted to being a family of four. We have little Lydia Hope, who's now a month old, And so I'll be getting back into work over the next couple of weeks. Again, I'll be checking messages in the office this week and being back in touch with folks, um, scheduling some meetings and different things like that. And so um, just know that I'm praying for our congregation. I'm praying for you uh, and love you. Thank you so much. Um, Thanks for being here. Uh, As I mentioned, we work with whatever we can. I want to say thank you to all those who are up front this morning for Kent and for Matt, for Kim, our wonderful musician, for our tech team back there. We even have a congregation of one this morning. Very good that we can be together, as I said, in whatever way we're able in this space where we worship God and remember God's promises for us. Our order of worship is posted on Facebook, and so if you're able to uh, check that out, please do go ahead and make that big or print it. It does have our song lyrics and different things uh, and music on there, so please um, take a look at that. If you're watching on Facebook Live, uh, please remember to like and to share this live post um, to kind of get it out there, not only to our community, but out there into the world. If you're watching on YouTube, I would uh, ask that you subscribe, and then you can hit that little bell notification. I think it's up in that corner of your screen. That way, it'll notify you whenever we're live. And so thank you for following along. We're going to begin our worship this morning with a thanksgiving for baptism and a confession and forgiveness. In case the bishop or something is watching, I know that usually we only do one of those things, but we're just looking for ways to be interactive. So if you are able to, please grab a bowl or a cup of water so that we can remember our baptism together in just a moment. My last announcement is that I'll be on Facebook Live feed right after we're through here to share a greeting of peace and to chat with those folks who are joining us virtually. And so, um, again, thanks for being here. Thanks for following. Thanks be to God for a congregation and a community that is faithful. We begin now with our thanksgiving for baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. 
Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. At this time, you can dip your hand into that cup or bowl of water and remember God's goodness that works through the water. You can make the sign of the cross with that water, either on your forehead, belly, shoulder, and shoulder, or sometimes I like to make the sign of the cross on my forehead as it was at my own baptism. Thanks be to God for the gift of salvation through baptism. Amen. We continue with our confession and forgiveness. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll sing together our gathering song. Almighty God, your word is cast. I believe it's uh, hymn 516 in the ELW, the red hymnal. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from the 55th chapter of Isaiah. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to to God. God. The psalm of the day will be sung responsibly. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. To you shall vows be fulfilled. To you, the one who answers prayer, to you all flesh shall come. Our sins are stronger than we are, but you blot out our transgressions. Happy are they whom you choose and draw to your courts to dwell there. They will be satisfied by the beauty of your house, by the holiness of your temple. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation. O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the oceans far away. You make firm the mountains by your power. You are girded about with might. You still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves and the clamor of their peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth will tremble at your marvelous signs. You make the dawn and the dusk to sing for joy. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain, you soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing, and the hills be clothed with joy. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks, and the valleys cloak themselves with rain. Let them shout for joy and sing. Reading from the 8th chapter of Romans. There is therefore now No condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit. Since the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give you life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God.
I invite you, wherever you are, however you're able, to please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory Glory to you, you, O Lord. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into the boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil. They sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. Since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. That is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a little while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, that is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and another thirty. The gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Quick reminder that our children's sermon is posted on our Facebook page. I so miss getting together with the little ones right here, uh, but we're trying to keep each other safe. Sisters and brothers, grace is yours, and so is peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I love the psalm that we sang this morning. There's a line from that psalm that when I started reading the the readings at the beginning of the week, I just circled it immediately. It says, God makes the dawn and the dusk sing for joy. What a beautiful line. What a, a beautiful way to talk about how God is working at all times and in all places through ways we can't even begin to comprehend or understand. That's the way that the Scripture introduces God to us, one Scripture after another, revealing God to us who is working at all times and in all places, but it tells us very specific things. What does that mean, God is making the dawn and the dusk sing for joy? Then we have a parable from Jesus this morning about a sower who went out to sow. That's the way Jesus presents God too, revealing bits and pieces to us, speaking in ways that he believes we will understand. That parable is our focus this morning. It's one of the agricultural or agrarian parables of Jesus where he talks specifically in terms of seeds sprouting and things growing and animals, different things like that. I mean, God is amazing. God works in so many ways. I've seen social media posts lately that start with, let me brag on God for a minute. minute." I wonder if you've seen those. That's what we get to do today. We get to brag on God and the ways that God works in the world, in the world that we live in, even on planet Earth in the year 2020. Today we hear this parable from Jesus and also an explanation, which is always helpful. And today we'll get the chance to talk about parables, what they are and what they aren't. Parables, in short, are Jesus' way to brag on God, to introduce God's character, to introduce God's kingdom and God's desires for each one of us. The parable today deals with seeds that fall into soil and a sower. And like I said, it's one of the agricultural parables. And so this morning I'm going to focus in a little bit on the world of agriculture just to begin Because I have a sense that while he's speaking about seeds and soil and and a sower, a farmer, that what he is indeed talking about, indeed what he's always talking about, is God's kingdom and God's character to us. But since he puts it in these terms, I believe he's doing so to help us broaden and deepen our understanding of how God works. Now, in an article I read this week about the latest... uh, 
technology being used by farmers in the agricultural industry, I was amazed at the things that that industry is doing to bring efficiency up and waste down. I mean, in my mind, and, and I spent a good bit of time in sort of semi-rural Iowa, I've been around farms before, here in North Carolina too, and, and to me, you know, I think of really high-tech stuff as like the combines and the tractors. But today, they're doing so much more. The biggest technologies being used to advance the world of agriculture are things like drones, drones that are used in armies of thousands in order to track the growth of crops, to survey land, to develop precision weather radars and more. Now there are labs and machines and algorithms and software that make sure that soil is at its most productive and that make sure that not one seed is ever wasted and to make sure that crops are as genetically perfect as they can be for maximum yield. I mean, we want to be the most efficient and to have the least amount of waste, right? And that's a good thing. We want to develop technologies that could end problems like world hunger. Now, if we could just share our food resources better, we would be a good ways down the road. But this technology is all about efficiency. That's clearly the best way. Nothing goes to waste. We use the fewest pesticides. We get the most food possible. Those are all good things. But then it can be a little bit strange to read through our gospel lesson today and hear about this sower who went out to sow and it seems like just sort of haphazardly flung seeds all over the place. If we're agreed that efficiency is good for agriculture, we would have to say that this sower is not a great gardener or farmer, which is strange. If efficiency is the goal, this one doesn't seem to really know what they're doing. Jesus says, a sower went out to sow, and then seeds fell on the path and were taken by birds. Some fell on rocky ground and they were scorched. Others fell into thorns and were choked out, but then some fell in good soil. Now, that's not that efficient. That's not the story of a farmer uh, using technology to be as efficient as possible. This is a farmer who's doing something else. It's a parable from Jesus. It's about seeds, but it's really about God's word. And the soil is really about us as we receive God's word. And the sower is God, God's self. So let's take this opportunity to talk about parables because this is the first parable in a series of seven parables that we're going to read on Sunday morning is going forward. So we need some kind of a good understanding about what parables are. Like I said, parables are Jesus' way to brag on God, to explain God's character and God's kingdom, and to hold God's character and God's kingdom up next to or maybe even against the powers of this world and the kingdoms of this world, and finally to tell us what God's desires are for each one of us. Parable, parables are supposed to be shocking and strange, especially in the first century. They would, they would do just that. They would throw us off of a solid, certain ground and force us onto shaky ground to think about things or to think about the world differently. And of course, Jesus is amazing at telling these kinds of stories. So in this case, we, we have to or we're forced to go deeper into the story about a sower and seeds and soil to figure out what the message here really is. Now, in parables, you can't always tell exactly who is who who is God supposed to be and who are we supposed to be? But today, Jesus kind of spells it out, kind of does us a solid and helps us out. The sower is God who casts the seeds of the good news of the kingdom all over the world. And the soil are those who hear the message. The kind of soil you are depends on how you receive the good news of the kingdom through Jesus Christ, how you receive the good news of what God is doing in the world. But there's a couple of strange things going on here. Remember, Jesus, during his ministry, mostly spoke to and preached to rural crowds. Now, clearly here, there's a big following that had gathered Jesus, uh, around Jesus by this point, such a large crowd, in fact, that the scripture starts by saying he had to get in a boat and social distance from them. He needed a bit of space in order to preach from a, to everyone. But there's still rural types, generally, around the region of Galilee, people who are probably very familiar with agriculture themselves probably even to the point of being a little bit uncomfortable about how this story plays out. 
These are people who would meet this sower who dropped seeds on the path and in the thorny soil and the rocky soil, and they wouldn't want to, to hear about that. They don't want to hear about seeds being wasted, thrown and dropped on all sorts of soil. And in 21st century America, where most of us don't grow our own food, maybe you have a garden like we do, but it's not the majority of what we consume or eat, so maybe us 21st century Americans miss that just a little bit. But if we, if we read up on it, we may know about all these technologies that, that we've already talked about, that farmers are using drones and laboratories and genetic testing. We may even know that in farming, efficiency is key, and we know that farmers are supposed to bring efficiency up and waste down. And so I suppose, both for a first century audience of Jesus and for us here today, we have to ask the question, what gives here? Is God a bad farmer? Is that what this is about? Well, of course not. The story is about how God extravagantly spreads the seed of the word of the kingdom uh, widely, lavishly, even recklessly all over the world. God who doesn't leave anyone out of hearing the good news of the kingdom, even knowing that it won't always be received well. Now, it would be a very surface-level understanding of this story to say, well, hey, look at the story. You know, God doesn't care about efficiency, so all that technology that we're using on farms these days, it has nothing to do with God. That happens all apart from God. That would be a very surface-level understanding of this story. That doesn't really make sense. A deep understanding or a deep faith would tell us that this is really about God spreading the news of Christ around the world and that God actually works through all different things, that God gives wisdom and skill and ability to people like farmers and lab technicians and others to figure out a problem, the, the answers to problems that we have so that we can feed one another, even if we don't always get it right. God is there helping every step of the way from engineers and scientists to working in the field, workers in the fields, God is there. That's what deep faith tells us. And so Jesus is in a boat today in front of a largely agricultural or rural or agrarian crowd telling a story about seeds that is really about God's grace and love, God who extravagantly gives and gives and gives not only words of the kingdom, but grace and love and peace. He casts the good news of salvation through Christ recklessly, knowing that it won't always be received well. And Jesus' story today reveals God's character to those who hear it. But Jesus uses language that they will understand in order to make his point. And so he talks about a sower and seeds and soil. Let your heart be good soil, deep, rich, ready to bear fruit and increase yield for God's kingdom. Now, there's a great way for people to remember who need to be uh, in the light of God's generosity, right? Sower, seeds, soil. We, we know what those things mean. We, we know what these things are. So that's a good way to help us remember. But Jesus is going to go on for the next six weeks to speak of it differently, using different terms. It's almost as if Jesus is trying whatever he thinks will work so that we can understand who God is and how God operates. And this morning, it's all about how God is generous to the point of being reckless, extravagant, with the grace, the mercy, the love, the salvation in the kingdom of God. And as we hear our story today, we prepare for the future. We need to have eyes and ears and hearts and minds that are open to hearing all these messages about who God is and how God operates. We need to be ready to hear the good news in many different ways. Our understanding of how God works is going to be deepened and broadened if we can really hear the parable stories of Jesus and receive them into our hearts as good soil. Remember, a good rule of thumb is that we should never make the mistake of limiting what God can do or how God can speak in the world. Because indeed, the breadth of the imagery and the symbols that Jesus will use to preach the kingdom message to us is meant to train us to see it everywhere. <clears throat> if we only start looking for the ways that God can work, 
in farmers and seeds and soil now will be missing out on the rest of all of it, right? This is just a symbol. It's an image to help us understand. He's training us to see it everywhere, in the streets of our cities, in the community, in the grocery store, at Walmart, wherever. He's training us to see God's character everywhere. Sure, he's going to use more agrarian type stuff like wheat and weeds and mustard seeds and lost sheep, but he's also going to use a rich fool and lost coins and marriage feasts and prodigal sons to tell us who God is and how much God loves us. He's training us to see the truth and the character of God everywhere in deep and rich and full ways. So, If we look at our story today and say, okay, well, I guess God likes wasting seeds, then we'll be seeing it pretty shallowly. That'll be a shallow and unhelpful reading of the text. And likewise, if we look at the world today, we could choose to see things in sort of that shallow, surface-level way that misses the depth, the richness, the fullness of God's saving activity in the world. And in today's world, in the year 2020, on planet Earth, we're probably a little too likely to be led into shallow, surface-level understanding of how God works and of who God is. One phrase that I've heard and seen a lot recently is faith over fear. And that's a good thing. We ought to have faith in God that supersedes and wins over our fear. That is a good way to view the world. The faith that God is in control that God is with us, that God will protect us. But how do we believe that works? Are we believing that in a a shallow, a surface-level way? By saying things like, well, God will protect me, so I don't need to wear a mask. That might be a surface-level understanding of how God works. God protects us, absolutely. But does God not work through masks and through giving human skill and wisdom to doctors and health officials and groups who can recommend things like social distancing and others? Of course. God works on every level of our lives, of our culture, to bring health and healing, love and grace to all of us. I'm reminded of a story that I know I've told in a sermon before. It's about the guy who hears on the news that there's going to be a flood And uh, then the waters are rising and the boat comes and he says, no, I'm not going. God will protect me. And then he's on his roof and here comes the helicopter. No, I'm not going. God is going to, God is going to protect me. And then he drowns in the floodwaters and meets God face to face. He swore that God would protect him. And so he turned away the news and the boat and the helicopter. Well, here in the year 2020 and I guess for some time to come, I would sure hate for folks to get to heaven and say, God, I I said faith over fear. I said you would protect me. And for God to say, I sent you doctors and scientists and health professionals and organizations, but you wouldn't listen. See, God is working everywhere, all the time, at many different levels to bring us the truth, to bring us protection, to show us God's love. Just like we need more than a surface level understanding of our story about the sower and the seeds and the soil, so we also need a deep, broad, rich understanding and trust in God that has faith that God is working for our good in the world that we live in, not detached from it, in ways that we can see and hear all the time. So keep your eyes open this week, brothers and sisters, for the ways that God is doing all of this. And don't be afraid to go deep into your understanding about who God is and how God operates. That way, when we brag on God, we can really blow people's minds with our deep and rich faith in who God is and how God works. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn of the day is on what has now been sown. I believe that's hymn 550 in our red hymnals. Yeah.
Jesus come. We speak together the words of our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We prepare now to pray together. called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Gracious God, your word has been sown in many ways and places. We pray for missionaries and newly planted congregations around the world. Inspire us by their witness to faith we share. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creating God, the mountains and hills burst into song, and the trees and fields clap their hands in praise. We pray for the birds and animals who make their home in the trees, and for lands stripped bare by deforestation. Empower us to sustainability use for what you have given us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Reigning God, we pray for our nation's leaders. Increase their desire for justice and equality. We pray for our enemies. Bridge the chasms that divide and guide and divide us and guide authorities to a deep and lasting peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Abiding God, care for all who are in need, especially Nancy Porter, Glenn Clark, Missy Jenkins, J.D. and Lois Honder, Gert Fisher, Eddie Havner, Blanche Pragus, Bobby Rudisell, Lois DeCant, Jack Huss, Roy Annis, Jack Davis, Norris and Pam Howe, Martha and Sam Bean, Bernie Lewis, Drew Hustickler, Peggy Joe Lockridge, Zach Holland, Jack Hollander, Brandon Hevner, Beverly Hamrick Stiles, Sandy Sheldon, Doug Knowles, Juan Wiles, Sandra Mossman, coronavirus victims, the family of Selena Alexander, and the family of Dan Mooney, and all others on our prayer list. For those who are doubting, renew faith. For those who are worrying, provide release. For those who struggle, ease burdens. For those in fear, give hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renewing God, revive your church in this place, Nourish and nurture the seeds you have planted, that we might grow as disciples. Replace what has been depleted. Sustain our ministries and deepen relationships within the wider community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we give thanks for all who have died. Comfort us in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. Before my prayer for congregation and community, I'll remind you that if you're watching on Facebook Live, I'll, I'll join you in just a moment to share a greeting of peace. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, bless our congregation and our community as we continue to deal with the reality of COVID and the unrest in our country. Oh God, we ask that you would bless us and guide us so that we may be helpful, so that we might follow Christ each and every day, that our hearts and minds and spirits would be open to see how you work in deep and broad in rich ways. Oh God, bless us so that we may bless others through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Thank you.